Think about light from a distant star, one that's millions of light years away. For all that time, for millions of years, a particle of light has been flying through the absolute emptiness of space, crossing an unimaginable distance just to end its journey by landing in your eye. But what if I told you that for that particle of light, its incredible journey took no time at all, that all from its perspective, the moment it was created and the moment it arrived in your eye happened at exact same instant and that the millions of light years of distance it crossed was for it precisely zero. It's a conclusion that sounds completely impossible, like it violates the most basic rule of reality. A journey of millions of years is not instant, a distance of trillions of miles is not zero and yet this is a direct unavoidable consequence of one of the deepest truths about our universe, a rule so powerful that the space and time themselves will literally stretch and shrink to make sure that this rule is never ever broken. To understand this, we have to see the universe not from our perspective, but from the perspective of light itself. And what we'll find is one of the most profound ideas of all physics, that for light, there is no space, there is no time. Before we can break the rules of reality, we need to understand the rules we live by. Our whole lives are built on what feels like an obvious truth about the space and time. Imagine you are standing in your room and you want to walk to the other side. You know without thinking that this will take some amount of time, a few seconds maybe. You know that you have to cover certain distance, a few meters. This relationship is simple and predictable. Speed as we have learned in school is just distance divided by time. This intuitive view of the world was formalized centuries ago by Sir Isaac Newton. For him, space was an absolute, unmovable stage where everything happened. A meter was a meter, no matter where it was. Time was a universal clock, ticking at the same rate for everyone and everything. It flowed like a great river, carrying all of us along with it. This is the world of classical physics. And for just about everything in our daily lives, it works perfectly fine. For example, if you are on a train moving at 100 km per hour and you throw a ball forward at 20 km per hour, someone in the platform will see the ball zipping by at 120 km per hour. The speeds just add up. It's common sense. For centuries, everyone assumed this simple addition worked for everything, including the fastest thing we know, speed of light. The thinking was, if you were on a spaceship moving super fast and turned on a flashlight, that beam of light would travel at its normal speed, plus the speed of your ship. It seemed obvious, it seemed logical, and it was completely wrong. In late 19th century, physicists were grappling with Maxwell's brilliant new theory of electromagnetism. Buried in his equations was a startling prediction. The speed of light in a vacuum was a constant. It doesn't matter how fast the source of light is moving or how fast you are, it's always the same number, about 299,792 kilometers per second. Now this created a crack in the foundation. How could the speed of light be same for someone who is standing still and for someone chasing it at half its speed? It violated the simple logic of our train and the ball example. This simple and stubborn fact, the constant speed of light, would force a complete demolition and rebuilding of our understanding of space and time. And the architect of this new reality was a young patent clerk in Switzerland named Albert Einstein. In 1905, Albert Einstein published his theory of special relativity. It was built on two ideas or postulates that sound deceptively simple. The first one is the principle of relativity. It just says that the laws of physics are same for everyone in uniform motion. Now, this is basically just an extension of our intuition. If you were on a perfectly smooth train with no windows, you can't do an experiment like throwing a ball or pouring a liquid that would prove that you're moving. Laws of physics work the same and only your motion relative to someone else matters. The second postulate was a bombshell. Einstein took Maxwell's weird result and ran with it, declaring that the speed of light in a vacuum is same for all observers, no matter how they are moving. This means that if a rocket flies past you at 99% the speed of light and turns on a laser, both you and the pilot will measure that light beam traveling at exact same speed, the cosmic speed limit, which is the speed of light. 
This is where our common sense completely shatters. To accept both these ideas, something has to give. If speed, which is distant divided by time, is absolute for light, then the distant and times themselves can't be. They have to be relative. They have to stretch and shrink depending on your motion. And this was Einstein's revolutionary leap. He realized that the universe doesn't have a master clock or a master ruler. Instead, it has a universal speed limit and the fabric of space and time will warp in bizarre ways to make sure that no one ever breaks it. What we experience as space and time are woven together into a single thing, space-time. And this fabric of space-time gets distorted by motion. To wrap our heads around just how weird this is, we need one of the physics most powerful tools, the thought experiment. Imagine a clock, not just any clock. This is a light clock, the simplest one you can imagine. It's just two mirrors facing each other with a single particle of light, a photon, bouncing between them. Every time the photon hits the bottom mirror, we count it as one tick. Simple enough. Now, let's put the clock on a table in front of you. You watch the photon travel up to the top mirror and back down. Tick, up, down, talk. The distance is fixed, the speed of light is constant, so the time for each tick is perfectly regular. This is your clock at rest. But now, let's put that same light clock on a transparent spaceship and watch it fly past at, say, 80% the speed of light. For the astronaut inside, nothing has changed. According to Einstein's first postulate, the laws of physics are same for her. She sees a photon going straight up and down, just like you did. Her clock is working normally. But what do you, the person on the ground, see as the ship zooms by? You don't see the photon going straight up and down because the clock is moving sideways. So you see the photon travel a longer diagonal path. It has to travel up at an angle to hit the moving top mirror and then back down at an angle to hit the moving down mirror. But here is the mind bending part. Both you and the astronaut have to measure the speed of light or speed of photon in this case adds exact same value, the speed of light. And that's the unbreakable second rule. But you can see the photon take a longer distance. And if speed equals to distance by time, and the speed must stay the same while the distance has gotten longer, then the only possible conclusion is that the time for that journey must have gotten longer too. This means that from your perspective, the astronaut's clock is ticking slower than yours. While her clock goes tick, your might go tick tock tick tock. Time itself has slowed down for the astronaut and her spaceship. This isn't a mechanical glitch or an illusion. It's a fundamental property of reality. This effect is called as time dilation. And it's not just a theory, it's real. We see its effect every day. GPS satellites, for example, orbit the Earth at high speeds and their onboard clocks run slightly slower than the clocks on the ground, just as Einstein predicted. Scientists have to constantly correct for this. If they didn't, your GPS would be off by several kilometers every single day. We also see it in particle accelerators. Short-lived particles called muons, when sped up to near the speed of light, survive far longer than they normally should have. Because from our perspective, their internal clocks have slowed down. The faster you move through the space, the slower you move through the time. This effect gets more and more dramatic as you get closer to the speed of light. But what happens if you actually get to the speed of light? Well, we'll get there. But first, we need to look at the other side of this strange coin. If time can stretch, what happens to space? Einstein showed that the space and time aren't separate. They are woven together in a four-dimensional fabric called space-time. You can't mess with one without affecting the other. The light clock experiment showed that moving through the space shows your journey through the time. So it stands to reason that it has to affect your journey through the space too. Let's go back to our spaceship. For the astronaut moving at high speeds, her time is passing more slowly than yours. But to her, everything feels normal. In fact, from her point of view, it's you on the ground whose clock is running fast. Relativity is, well, relative. So who's right? You both are. Your measurements are equally valid in your own frame of reference. Now this symmetry leads to another bizarre result. To keep the speed of light constant for everyone, not only does time have to dilate, but the space itself has to contract. 
from your point of view on the ground, an object moving at relativistic speed will appear shorter in its direction of motion. Now, this is called as length contraction. Imagine our astronaut is flying a 100 meter long spaceship. As it zips past you, you'll only see its clock ticking slowly. But if it measure the length of this ship, it will be less than 100 meter, maybe 80 meters or 50 meters depending on its speed. The spaceship has physically shrunk, or at least from your perspective. The astronaut inside, however, wouldn't notice a thing. To her, the spaceship is still 100 meters long. But if she were to measure the distance between two points in your stationary world, she would measure that distance as being shorter. And again, this isn't a visual trick, like something looking smaller in the distance. It's a real physical contraction of space itself. The universe literally rearranges its spatial dimension from your point of view to guarantee that you will always measure the astronaut's headlight beam traveling at the speed of light. The faster something moves, the more it contracts. And just like time dilation, this effect becomes extreme as you get closer to the speed of light as the universe in the direction of the travel starts to flatten. So now we have two key results. The faster you go, the slower time passes and the shorter distances become. Now what happens if we take these two ideas to their absolute limit? What happens if we try to imagine the perspective of light itself? We are now ready to take the final leap. Imagine you are created in a core of a star in Andromeda galaxy some 2.5 million light years away. Your destiny is to travel across intergalactic space and end your journey by hitting an astronaut's eye on Earth. From astronomers' perspective, your journey takes 2.5 million years. For 2.5 million years, you cross an incredible distance at the constant speed of light. But what is that journey like for you, the photon? First, time dilation. The math shows that as you get closer to the speed of light, your experience of time slows down, heading towards zero. At the actual speed of light, time dilation becomes infinite, which means that for you, the photon, time stops completely. The moment of your creation in Andromeda galaxy and the moment of your absorption in the eye on Earth are not separated by 2.5 million years. This happens at the exact same instant. For you, no time has passed at all. And second, length contraction. The formula for length contraction shows that as you approach the speed of light, the universe in your direction of travel shrinks, heading towards zero. At the speed of light, this contraction is absolute. The 2.5 million years of distance between Andromeda and Earth shrinks down to nothing. From your point of view, the distance you traveled was exactly zero. So let this sink in. From the perspective of a photon, its journey across the cosmos is both instantaneous and covers zero distance. It is emitted and absorbed at the same place and at the same time. For light, there is no journey, there is no duration. Now, to be fair to the physicist watching, there's a technical glitch. Strictly speaking, a photon can't have a perspective or a frame of reference. A reference frame is a viewpoint where you are at rest. But one of the core rules of relativity is that light moves at the speed of light in all reference frames. So nothing can be at rest with a photon. So talking about what a photon experiences is a conceptual shortcut. It's what the equation shows us happens in the limit as you approach the speed of light. It's the logical, unavoidable conclusion of the rules that run our universe. This strange, timeless reality of photon isn't just a mathematical quirk. It points to a fundamental nature of space-time itself. Einstein's theory showed that while the different observers can disagree on how much time or space separates two events, they will all agree on something called space-time interval. For any two events connected by something moving slower than light, like you walking to the office, we call the interval as time-like. Cause and effect are possible. There's a clear before and after. For two events so far apart that not even light could travel between them, we call the interval space-like. They are causally disconnected. Like Cuban Missile Crisis and the birth of a star in another galaxy on the same day are space-like events. One could not have caused the other. But the path a photon takes is special. It's called as light-like or null interval. For any path light takes, the space-time interval is always mathematically zero. This is the real physics behind the statement that for light, there is no space and no time. 
Its entire existence from the emission to absorption traces a path of zero length on the fabric of reality. We can visualize this with a light cone. Imagine a star exploding. The light from that blast spreads out in a sphere. If we graph this on a space-time diagram with time going up and space going across, that expanding sphere of light forms a cone. The surface of this cone represents the path of all the photons from that explosion. It is the boundary of causality. Anything inside the future light cone can be affected by the explosion. Anything outside, it cannot. The photon itself travels along the very edge of this cone, defining the absolute limit of the cause and effect. It's the messenger that weaves the cosmos together. Yet, for the messenger itself, the message is delivered instantly. We started this journey seeing the world through our own eyes, a world of solid distances and steady, reliable flow of time. We saw how a single strange fact, the unchanged speed of light, forced us to tear down that comfortable reality. We followed Einstein's logic to stunning conclusion that space and time are malleable fabric that stretches and shrinks with motion. Finally, when we look on the perspective of light itself, we saw the entire universe collapse. For a photon, there is no yesterday, there is no tomorrow, there is only one single timeless instant. There is no here and there, there is only a single dimensionless point. The light from the most ancient star you see in the night sky traveled for billions of years and across quadrillions of miles to reach your eye. But for that light, the journey was over the very instant it began. From its perspective, it was born and died in the same moment, right where you are standing. The universe we see is just one story told from one point of view. It's a story of age and distance, of past and future. But it's not the only story told from the perspective of light. And in that story, everything, everywhere happens all at once. If your mind is still bending from this trip through space-time, consider subscribing for more explorations into the cosmos and strange rules that govern it. We'd love to know what you think in the comments. What other physics paradox or mind-bending concepts would you like for us to unravel next? Thanks for watching.